Hello my friends, violin players I must say now. Welcome to Pro Am Strings. I'm Henriette, I am your teacher for this course. Uh, I'm the owner of the Pro Am Strings channel and I'm delighted to present you this new course. You guys, the people watching these videos, have asked me to do this course for a long time. So finally, here it is and we're going to enjoy it together. So I'm really excited to get started and I'm hoping you are too and I'm hoping that you have watch the introduction to this course where I've outlined all the things that you need. So I'm hoping that you've got your violin, you've got your bow, you've got your rosin, you've got your shoulder rest and maybe also a music stand to play from. And if you've got all of that, then please, please subscribe to the channel here, here on the right hand side of your screen. If you also hit the bell button somewhere below this video, that means that you'll get notified whenever I release a new video in this series. So if you want to stay with this course and practice with me regularly, that might well be a good thing to do. If you haven't yet organised all your accessories for this course, shall I call it, look down in the description below this video um, that there it outlines all the things that you need for this course and you can get all decent quality products from my Amazon shop. There's two Amazon shops down below this video. One is for those of you who are in the US and there's another one for those of you who are in the UK. So when you're ready let's get started and we're getting started with the bow. So before we get started with the bow let's have a good look at it. Most bows were traditionally made from Pernambuco or Brazil wood, which is a nice, soft and flexible wood. Um, and you can see that the bow is shaped in a certain way and it's really nice and flexible. And later on, when you learn to play the violin, we need that flexibility in our bow. I'll come to this point in a moment. And then the other side of the bow, there is the bow hair. And that was traditionally made from horse hair. Nowadays, there's, it's also made from artificial fibres just to make it last a little bit longer. Uh, but the main thing is that the hair of the bow is also very stretchy. So this whole thing is a flexible thing and we need that flexibility as I've said before. So before we can play on the bow, we need to tighten the hair. You can see that the hair of my bow is very loose. Can you see it? I, I'm not touching the hair with my fingers and I'll tell you in a moment why that is. Uh, but here at the end of your the heel of your bow, this part's called the heel or the frog, the heel of the bow has got this little screw and if you tighten this clockwise you can see that the hair gradually becomes tighter. I'm going to tighten it until I can stick my index finger in between the stick and the hair at the narrowest point and then you've got just enough tightness of the hair. Now if you should tighten the bow more it will lose its shape. Now now the hair is tight enough so that we can bow on the strings and now we need to add some rosin to this hair. Rosin is resin from a pine tree which has been prepared in a rosin factory and shaped in different shapes and this makes the bow hair nice and sticky uh, because with the bow, when we bow on the strings, we create some friction which then in turn makes the strings vibrate. So if you didn't have any rosin on your bow, and some of you may well have a brand new bow which has never been played, so there is no rosin in your bow, um, we need to put some rosin on that bow to create that stickiness so that we can use it on the strings. Rosin is delicate stuff, if you drop it, it smashes to pieces. But also, if you hit it on this metal bit here, on the heel of the bow, it will chip bits off. So what I do is, with my thumb, I cover that metal part. So if I need to bash into my thumb, I will bash into my soft thumb and I won't chip bits off the rosin. And now I'm very gently applying just a little bit of pressure, putting some rosin on the bow. And I'm doing this in short sections. Can you see? I stay to stick to the same section and then I move up a bit until you can see the powder coming off the rosin. And if you haven't got any rosin in your bow, if it's brand new, then you may well 
with double the amount of rosin on that I put on right now and I'm making sure that I'm going right to the point of the bow here I apply an even amount of rosin everywhere I'll just go back again there we are now that will do me fine and now I'm just tipping this so that or any excess rosin falls off there we go now your bow is ready to play. Now before we play, I'll tell you a little bit about a good bow hold. And a good bow hold is a very special one. And it's designed to be able to steer the bow in all kinds of directions. And as we progress through this course, we'll come back to the bow hold time and time again, because this is something that develops over time. And I'm going to say it today, and you'll hear me say it many, many times in this course, Playing the violin is a process. You'll get better over time by practicing it because you become more relaxed, your muscles become stronger as you learn to play and that's how you can perfect all the different postures and techniques and same with the bow hold. Now the bow hold, we're going to start with the little ring that you make between your thumb and your middle finger. And if you have a really good look at this little ring, I'm touching my thumb on the underside of my middle finger, about in the middle, like in the middle joint there. Can you see also that my thumb is bent? There we are. This is the basis of a good bow hold, which really holds the bow off the floor, shall we say. So I'm opening a little gap there. And then if you have a good look here, you've got the frog here, and then you've got this little leather, which is a protective leather. In between those two, there is a tiny bit of wood right here. And that's where my thumb is going to go, so like that. Can you see it? Just from that side. Now, I totally get that this corner really cries out for a thumb, but be careful because that is not the right way of holding the bow. Your thumb should go right there. And you can see I've still got my bent shape. Now I'm popping my middle finger over the bow, precisely opposite my thumb, like I had it when I was having that ring, okay? Drop your ring finger first, next to your middle finger, like this. Then drop your index finger, about a finger width space in between your middle finger and your index finger. And then drop your pinky, but a pinky has got a very special place. Um, because if you look carefully here at the end of your bow, you can see that it has edges. It has a hexagonal shape. And my pinky is going to go not on the top, but on the edge that is towards you, like that. So when I have a whole complete bow hold, I have it like this. I'm just going to show you from all angles so you can see it. So my thumb is in that corner, just where you see the little bit of wood here between the frog and that little protective leather. That's where my thumb goes. Then my middle finger goes opposite my thumb. My middle finger and my ring finger are both together, quite far over. So if this is you, see if you can drop it a little bit further over. Then my index finger is about a finger width away from my middle finger. It's over, in, on my bow, it's just over that black leather protective sleeve. Uh, some people have got this silver wire already nearer where your index, where my index finger is, so it could be that you're on the silver. And then finally, our little finger is on the side edge. Now, once you've got that, you've got one major, major step of progress made. Well done. Let's see if we can do some soft waves with this bow. Now that will feel very, very odd on your first day. But that's okay. <laughs> you will progress as you follow this course. Let's do some windscreen wipers now. And now, let's really feel in your hand if you can feel the shift in balance. There we are. If your bow hold is changing, that's fine. Let's see if we can find that again. So start with that ring between your thumb and your middle finger. Get your thumb in place first, then your middle finger opposite, drop all your fingers down, 
and it may well be that you're back on track now. So take another look at your middle two fingers here. Make sure that they're not there, but they're nice and far over. Great. Now, before we can do our first bow strokes, and we're getting there today, don't worry. Let's first get started with the shoulder rest. I'm using a shoulder rest which is flexible. I, I have a Wolf Forte Secondo shoulder rest. You may do too. You may have a different brand or a different, slightly different shape. But all shoulder rests have got one thing in common. They go at the underside of your violin and they go more or less across. Later on we will be fine tuning this and attaching it so that it is in the best position for your particular shape of your shoulder. So I'm attaching it like this. In this instance, find the widest width of your violin here and that's where you'll attach it. If you've got a curved shoulder rest like I do, double check that this curve is the opposite of this curve. I always say to people, think of a smiley face here then you're in the right place. If you find that both curves are in the same direction, so I'll show you this, this is not good, so you can see that I've got this curve and this curve both in the same direction and that is not how we fit the shoulder rest, you might just move it the other way around. I'll find the biggest width and that will do for how I start. This shoulder wrist can swivel so I might like it a bit more on its side like that or um, you might like it more straight, more flat. We'll come, we'll come and sort that out at a later stage. Let's take a look at the tuning of your violin. I will do a different lesson about tuning. I'm going to pluck you the notes of the strings. The strings, if I have my violin like this, the strings are called G, D, A and E. So G is the lowest of my strings. Then next to it is the D string. Next to it is the A string. And next to it is the E string. And your E string is your highest pitch string and it's furthest to the right when you look at it like that. I'm hoping that your violin is more or less the same in tune as mine is. There's a G string. There's a D string. There's the A string. And the E string. There we are. Just pause this video if you're wildly out of tune. What you need to know now is that the pegs here, uh, they are for getting the strings roughly in tune. If your violin's roughly in tune, please don't use these, but use your fine tuners, your adjusters that you may have here. This is for fine tuning here. Okay, so when your violin is very nearly in tune, you can adjust it with the fine tuners on this side. Because, especially with the E string, the thinnest one here on the right, this one, if I start to fiddle with it on the peg here, I risk breaking the string. Now, when you play the violin, it's almost inevitable that at some point you might break a string, and that's okay. It happens to most people at some point. But, you know, if we can avoid breaking it, and especially in the early stages of your playing, then we'll do so. So make a habit of tuning here rather than here. Now it may be that your strings have gone completely loose. This is a natural product so it responds to changes in atmospheric pressure. Uh, so it may well be that one day you open your case and one of your strings is pinged and it's completely loose. It happens to me occasionally as well. And then you all obviously will have to use those big pegs. But for now, let's assume that you're reasonably in tune. So now let's put this violin up on our shoulder. And you can see that here there's a little button. Stick this button into your neck here, in your little dent in your neck here, straight in front. And now with your right hand, slide it across your collarbone to the left hand side, so that it's about at a 45 degree angle. So 
if you regard straight in front and precisely sideways, that's a 90 degree angle, isn't it? So you go back in the middle, so it's not too far to the side and neither is it straight in front, nice and sideways. Apart from your violin being sideways, so at an angle, it's also at a slight angle here in that the, the scroll of the violin, which is this thing, is slightly higher than this end. Only slightly higher. I always say to people, if you put a little ping pong ball here, it should start to roll very slowly towards your face. So if I have it like this, it will roll very fast towards my face. It will hit it in my face. If you have it like this, then that ping pong ball will roll off that way, you see? So only slightly higher, slightly above the horizontal. So we've got two angles now. We've got it sideways, the angle relative to straight in front, and the angle, the horizontal plane. But then it's also slightly angled sideways. So it's not completely flat like this, but it's tilted towards the E string slightly. And when we start to bow and we get a little bit more advanced, you will understand why that is. Now, I know this is a whole lot of information all at once. Take it step by step. You may watch this video back. There's always going to be a couple of days in between each video so you can practice what we've learned. And I would encourage you perhaps to watch this video three or four times in a row on consecutive days so that you pick up bits that you maybe let go on your first day and on your second day you might pick up something new and then again on your third day because as i've said before playing the violin is very much a process you add things to what you already know and perfection and we don't even think about that so give it your best at what we're doing and you will feel that you will get stronger and that you will develop as you progress I've got my bow on a little table right next to me, so let's pick it up if you've got it somewhere near you. If you can leave your violin on your shoulder, that's great. Okay. And let's see if we can find that bow hold that we had a moment ago. So I'm checking my thumb first of all. My thumb is bent. My middle finger is across from my thumb. I've got a finger width space here between my index finger and my middle finger and my pinky is on the side edge. Wonderful. Let's go and get ready and let's find the outer string, the one that is furthest to the left and let's play on that, on that G string it's called. And let's make your bows as long as you possibly can. <laughs> Congratulations, you've done your first bow strokes. Now it may be that you were playing shorter bows like that. For a start, that's absolutely fine. You will gradually, as you progress, increase your bow length. But isn't it wonderful? Is it much louder than you thought? As people always say to me, oh, the violin is so much louder than I thought it would be. That's also the case, of course, because it's right next to your ear here. Now let's find the other outer string, the thinnest one on the right hand side. It's called the E string and let's do the same thing. Try making your bows nice and long. Amazing, really well done. Really well done. So we're going back to the G string now. And now I want you to think about how much pressure you use on the bow. And it may well be that initially you were super light. And it may even have been bouncing around your bow. That's okay. Try to lean into the string a little bit more with your bow arm. However, if you are on the other end of the spectrum and you were a bit strong into the string, like this, try to lighten it up a little bit. See if you can find 
your nicest sound for today. Here we go, we're playing on the G string. right here let's go one string to the left which is the A string and let's play our long bows right there lovely it may well be that you find it quite difficult to find uh, the middle strings and that you're hitting the other string next to it quite frequently that's okay lots of people will find out it happens to them so eventually you will learn to play playing just on one single string and you might listen out and make a habit of that in these early days of your playing listen out if you play just one string or whether you hear other sounds that you don't mean to play but that just accidentally happen uh, and that way, becoming aware that you play more than one string at a time, it will be easier to eliminate those sounds. So now let's go on the second string, if you count them from the left hand side, which is the D string. We haven't played on it today. Make your bows longer again. Play the G string as well. That is lovely. So you've done a lot in this lesson today. First of all, we've thought about the bow and we have tightened the bow and put rosin on. Then we checked over your bow hold. We did some bow exercises, can you remember? Then we talked about the violin hold. And you may go over that again and see if you've got your angles right of your violin. And then we played on all four strings. In the meantime, we've also learned what these four strings are called. G, from left to right, G, D, A, and E. And that would be fantastic if you could memorize that for our next lesson. Learn the names of the strings and play on each of the individual strings with bows that are as long as you can possibly manage. And you've done wonderfully well getting your violin playing started. Now when we're finishing our playing for today and we're going to pack away, first of all we're going to take the rosin that may have fallen out of the hair off the stick there. So I'm just going to get a duster and just take that rosin off before I then loosen the bow. Remember we tightened the bow hair at the start of our lesson so now that we're not going to be playing anymore we're loosening the hair so that it will keep its natural springiness. So that's the bow sorted it can go straight into its case. While you were playing your violin and you'd rosined your bow at the start of your lesson some of that rosin may have fallen onto the varnish here. Now rosin has a chemical reaction with that varnish so we don't want to leave it on so I'm using my duster just to wipe all the rosin off and I'm going very gently below the bridge, below the strings and I'm just gently taking all of that rosin off then I'm taking my shoulder rest off and I'll put the violin in this case. Thank you so much for watching today. I very much look forward to seeing you in lesson two. Goodbye.